in this hello viewers in this video i'm going to be showing you how to make agate bread but if you really want to eat agate bread and you don't want to use potassium bromate that will give you cancer and you don't want to eat edc agate bread that will give you give you cancer or migraine or, or stress making you run up, up up and down in lagos just running up and down eh? ascorbic acid put a bit of it in your bread you find out your agate bread is just around the corner you don't need to spend money anywhere i know the bread makers in uk they'll be stoning me now they're gonna be angry that I've actually brought their secret out with, with those technical terms, tropic acid, and that is vitamin C. Calcium propionate is 2A3, calcium propionate is 2A2, E2H2, and sodium propionate is E281. You don't need them because they call eczema. All these propionates, I'm telling you, they cause eczema and migraine. You're gonna be scratching, you're gonna have eczema. Imagine, you don't want your skin, you know, take care of your skin. The alternative is very simple it's called ascorbic acid. What is ascorbic acid? It's E300. Now the time given to it is E300 and E300 is a bread improver. It's an antioxidant. It traps the bubble. You know when you open your bread, you can find some bubble, bubble here, bubble there, the yeast. But what this ascorbic acid does is it traps all those bubbles. It traps them, so it makes them tick. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. So. Right, um, so we're going to be using strong to make agege bread, we're gonna be using the strong white bread flour. So we're gonna be using strong white bread flour. Here I've got 650 grams of flour, so I'm just gonna pour my 650 grams of flour there. You need half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of salt. Now I've got 180 grams of sugar here. I'll add it to my... Then what else do you need? You need this ascorbic acid. You need half a teaspoon of ascorbic acid. So I'm going to use half a teaspoon of my ascorbic acid. Now make sure it's level. You have to make sure it's level. When I say teaspoon or half a teaspoon, make sure you make it level. And this is very good. It's going to help your bread as a bread improver. So just add that there. Mix that together. Let's mix it nicely. And set aside. Now let's prepare our yeast. No. To prepare your yeast, you need 200 ml of water. So add 200 ml of water. Now this water um, amount, remember to deduct it from the total amount of water you need for your bread. I'm gonna repeat that. The water you are using to make your yeast or to prepare your yeast, the warm water you are using to prepare your yeast, make sure you deduct that amount of water from the total ml of water you're gonna use for your bread. Okay, for 200 ml of water, what you need is you need, need two teaspoons of sugar. Now make sure it's level. So two teaspoons of sugar. One, two. And you need two tablespoons of yeast. Two tablespoon of yeast. So one and two. What you then do to your warm water is to is to whisk it. Now you have to whisk it because basically you want this the sugar um, to dissolve with the yeast. And you can just set this aside for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, what you want to see is you want to see that. Um, there's froth on it and the froth should be up to like two centimeter thick. No matter the pan you're using, either the open end without a lid or the one with a lid, which is this, you have to oil it. And the oil helps um, make sure that um, the, the, the bread does not stick to the pan. So I'm just gonna prepare, I'm not gonna be using this, but I'm gonna be using that because I want that square shaped. That's it. So what I'm going to do, just make sure you let the granite oil or vegetable oil or any oil you want to use that is suitable to your health make sure you rub it you can even use butter if you want yeah that's correct you can use butter just make sure you rub the pan and you rub it nicely remember our yeast what we put there this is what we want it's all risen now so what we quickly have to do is i have to quickly whisk this again that is the yeast that we just prepared. Beautiful, this is what I want. 
and I'm going to pour it into the flour. So at this point quickly what we're going to do is to pour the yeast into the, the fort and just pour it into the bread flour. So I'm going to mix this together as you can see. I'm going to mix this together. And also add 300 ml of water. Make sure you add 300 ml of water to the mixture. And that's what we need. Add some more flour. So far so good now as you can see it's getting a bit uh, so I mean don't be don't be scared to add more flour to this because uh, what I'm going to do I'm just gonna because I need to knead it so I'm gonna need for another 10 minutes um, after mixing now the question then is how many grams of flour have I used in mixing this dough as you can see we want this stretchy dough and that's what we want so I've used 900 grams of flour so if you find it very comfortable for you you might want to start with 900 grams of flour rather than using 650 but because when mixing the dough you have to kind of um, understand the that you need more flour because it's going to be very sticky when you mix with water and things like that so in the process of you mixing the flour you will have to add mixing the mixture you have to add some flour so in this case my the total amount of flour I've used it's around 900 grams altogether but as I say what is most important is you getting the right measurement and right texture so as you can see I'm kneading kneading the dough now so you stretch you bring it back in there now because you can put some oil in your hands let me see and rub it around the flour what then does is it gives you that easy way of can you see we are roll up in and just do the job you know just make sure that can you see so if you don't really have the energy to do that, just get your roller pin out and do this for 15 minutes. Your aggregate bread will be ready soon. You see, so you can also do that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you shortly after 15 minutes. All right. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do next. What I'm going to do is to rub for some oil in my thin hair. Make sure the oil is covering it. And I'm going to actually proof this, which means that I'm going to put my bread, my mixture or my, my bread buffer there. And um, 
just allow that to rise okay so i'm just going to put this here and allow the bread to rise now it's very important that when you do that you also rub oil on the bread which is vegetable oil or sunflower oil you want to use because what you want is you don't want it to be too dry when you rise this so if you can just do just do that that'd be great so cover that um, and put it in a very warm place yeah so I'm just gonna cover it with my kitchen towel there I'm also gonna use another one and um, yeah I'll see you in two hours time until it doubles in size thank you so much for watching see you shortly right guys it's one hour now so what we're just gonna do we're gonna look at the dough and see what um, what size what what's come out of it now so let's see how it's risen wow as you can see it's actually doubled in, in size and that is exactly what we want so what we have to do is to deflect it as you can see so I'm just gonna bring that out and you need it again for another five minutes Cool. So, you lift that. You see, you lift that and just put it in your pan. There we go. So, what we're gonna now do is I'm gonna lift this to to rise for another one hour. Right. I'll show you what we've got here. Thank you, viewers, for watching. Um, as you can see, the bread is risen now. So, what I'm just going to do. Is I'm going to cover it and put it in the oven so you have to set up your oven um, to just show you set up your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and um, you put it there for like preheat the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes then we, we're gonna put a agege bread and um, yeah I'm looking forward to show you the results shortly thanks for watching Check now, it's been in the oven for um, 30 minutes um, at 180 degrees Celsius. So I'm just gonna check and just probably just turn that off and just bring this out and show you what the agege bread looks like. All right, it's, it's quite difficult at this point. So I think what we have to do, wow. That is what we're talking about it's, it's quite heavy though out there that is your agege bread um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video Love you. thank you so much I know you must have enjoyed watching my giga bread I am going to show you the result I've shown you the result but I'm going to show you live and direct I'm going to cut it I'm going to tear the bread and you're going to see with your eyes the characteristics of a giga bread four corner 
two thick and strong three sweet so sugar add sugar if you like more sugar if you like sugar i don't like sugar too much but with sugar for yourself okay right and the last but not the least the inside is fluffy see fluffy i'm going to show you right this is the result of my gege bread so what i'm going to do oops i've just made that you saw the video so i'm just going to tear the bread so you can see what i'm in the video so thank you for watching my video and i'll see you for the next time